This episode of the podcast is brought to you by From Within Records, available late summer 2022. The final installment in the trilogy, the One Scene Unity, hardcore compilation featuring Not One Truth, Hellbound, Never Again, C4, Chemical Fix, Search for Purpose, Stiff Meds, Fool's Game, Contention, Buried Alive, Live It Down, Gridiron, Adrian, Broken Vow, Nothing But Enemies, Submit, Killing Me, and Wreckage. It's such an amazing lineup, and I'm so stoked for this final installment of this trilogy. Please be ready. Also, and still, a 12-inch EP coming summer 2022 by Envision. And if you're not following From Within Records on social media, you probably missed out that Envision will be taking over the From Within Records podcast to talk about the record answer any questions so if you missed out on the instagram story where you could have submitted your question you can also email from within records at gmail.com with the subject envision and they will read your question on the podcast and the band will answer it so please if you've been wanting to know anything about the band please take advantage of this opportunity because it doesn't come around that often so please support from within records because they support us also, if you need high quality merch for your band, your business, please hit up my friends over at Good Fortune Printing. You can contact them on Instagram at Good Fortune Printing, or you can email them at contact at goodfortuneprinting.com. I love Good Fortune. They're out of Wilkesbury, Pennsylvania. They do amazing work. All of you out there who own and proudly wear the collab tees that, that I did at FYA and the From Within Records Showcase. It was all printed by Good Fortune. They do awesome stuff for a lot of bands that you listen to. So please support Good Fortune Printing. On today's episode, we had to reach out and track down our good friend Justin. He plays in a band called Field of Flames. And they have a new record dropping tomorrow, which I am very excited for. Uh, you will hear it in the episode, but I ran into Justin at Disneyland and he had advanced copies of the record titled Constructing a War Against You, and it is amazing. Front to back, it's so awesome, and I have a lot of high hopes for this band. I've, I've been a fan for a while, but for them to drop a record like this and continue to improve their sound and just get better, it, it just gets me excited for the future for that band. So it was amazing to be able to sit down and talk to Justin about the record, and please, it drops tomorrow or technically tonight at 9 p.m. So boot up your Spotify, your Apple Music, Tidal, uh, Bandcamp, YouTube, wherever, and stream that record. Support this band. They're working hard. They're all awesome people. So please strap in. Enjoy this conversation. And without further ado, welcome Justin to the show. All right. And we're live. Welcome back to the podcast. Justin, how's it going? Good, dude. Good. I'm happy to have you back on the podcast. Um, you know, it, it was cool seeing you. Uh, was it a, a month or two ago at this point? I, I honestly can't remember the timeline off the top of my head. From uh, from when you saw me at um, Disneyland, or from the time you saw um, the, the show that we had at, uh, that we opened up for uh, Disneyland. Yeah, actually, oh, shit. I was going to say that wasn't a month ago, but yeah, that was uh, about a month ago. And I talked about. Yeah, time is flying. It's pretty insane. But yeah. we're here today because Field of Flames new album is dropping and I am very excited. Uh, going back to that Disneyland trip, uh obviously it was just by chance that we were both going to be there on the same day. It wasn't planned. I remember I had reached out, just wanted to link up and say what's up, and just by chance you had the new album on cd and you were nice enough to give me an advanced copy so i really appreciate you doing that oh you're welcome dude yeah it just it happened to work out like uh perfectly where you know i went to go visit the indecision records headquarters which is uh, dave mandel's uh, house that he operates it out of and uh he gave us a visit copy standing there for the first time that i got to that was the first time i got to see him and have him in hand and you were the first one i was able to 
pretty much give one to you. No one else really has one except for you at this point. And then I think a couple of pre-orders went out from the actual website, but but yeah, you were the first one to actually go on. Yeah, and I, I definitely appreciate that. And I was tripping out, too, because I had to, like, really think about it. I was like, dude, the only way I can listen to this CD is when I'm in my car. Because at home, m- like, my laptop, my computer don't have disk drives. And the only... Yeah, nothing does anymore. Like, yeah. I can listen to it on my computer or anything. I have a, a radio, and I can play it on the radio. Not even my car has a, a CD player now. My car's not even that much. It's not that, dude. It's a 2015, and this mm-hmm. one doesn't have a CD player. It's so weird. Yeah, it, it's crazy because I'm pretty sure the year because my car is from like 2016, and I'm pretty sure the year after that they stopped putting in like CD players in it, just because that format is just not as popular these days. Yeah, it really isn't, which kind of sucked because I personally love CDs, and um, you know I, I grew up buying a lot of CDs, and that's how I kind of found a lot of my music like at record stores. I, I'd get CDs and. You know, I have a, I had a whole collection of CDs. Um, most of them I've I've given away at this point, or I've give, given a handful away to one of my buddies named George. Mm-hmm. But um, other than that, dude, yeah, like CDs aren't really popular anymore, like you're saying. <laughs> yeah, they're not as popular, but they're still a viable format, especially with the whole uh, you know uh, pressing plant debacle with uh, you know how delayed everyone's vinyl is if they're trying to get their record pressed on vinyl so it, it, it's cool that you chose to have that option for this record yeah dude thank you i mean i i still think it's the most convenient way to listen to music besides like obviously streaming now it's like the cd's the mo- or most convenient like physical form of of music because cassette tapes are are cool and i personally like them and i i collect a handful but I know a lot of people don't have like really a format to or like some kind of source to play it on. And as far as like vinyl record, like that, the, yeah, I guess that's popular too. And kind of always has been and still is, but I like personally, I don't own a record player. So I, mm-hmm. you know, for me, yeah. CDs are the fucking way. Yeah. And I had some people reach out to me. They're like, yo, how did you get that early? Can you send me the Dropbox? And I'm like, dude, even if I wanted to, I couldn't because there's no way for me to upload the CD because, like I said, the only uh, CD player that I or a uh, disc drive that I have is in my car. So I was just like, yeah, I was like, sorry. Um, yeah, dude, you can't import it or anything. Huh? <laughs> yeah, no, I, I couldn't leak it. I couldn't do anything. I was just, you know, having to bring people in my car and be like, yo, like, come listen to this early. Like, the record is fucking awesome. Thank you. And that, that is funny. It makes it sound like. It makes it sound like it's um something like hard to get a hold of right now because obviously it's not out. Mm-hmm. But only really imagine like back in the day when there was no actual way to like stream music or you had to like get physical copies of stuff and you couldn't like you know you had to dub that on a tape or something like that and give it to someone else. So I don't know. It's it sounds cool right now before it comes out that someone was like oh let me listen to it and then there was obviously no way for you to give those tracks over to them right now. <laughs> so that's kind of cool. Yeah. And I don't want to go too much into the record because uh, this episode will be posted the day before it comes out. So, uh, you know, everybody can just kind of hear us uh, speaking about it and get a chance to listen to the record finally uh, tomorrow. But I- I'm just curious from the last release, which was almost a, a year ago at this point, uh, you know, remnants of a collapsed existence. I was just curious with that release, uh, how, do you think the whole scene like, you know, received that? And as far as growth for the band, do you think it did a lot for you guys? Um, I think that one definitely did a lot for us. And um, I think a big part of it had to do with it um, being put out like on a little cassette tape by the fanzine Words of Fire. I thought that was really cool if they were interested in the band and, and wanted to do that. Because I was reaching out to the labels kind of during that time to send that music off to. And um no one responded to me. I don't know if anyone really liked it or what. At that point, we'd already been a band for since 2017, kind of like not really grinding hard as a band or like consistently writing, but um, we have been the project deal of flame since 2017 and uh, no one wants to pick it up or, or put it out on like a, like a seven inch or something cool like that. It's kind of what my hopes were for it. And uh, so it's cool that he, that uh, Matt, this is his name, was able to do that for us. I think that's what really uh, kind of gave it the, the little push that I think it needed. And, um, you know, it was more than what I could have asked for. That's for sure. You know, just being able to hold it on like a, a tape is like, it's totally cool with me, especially because I, like I mentioned, I, I like tapes, you know? 
and I, I think it's just a cool like novelty look to it. That's about it. And um, yeah, so supporting it in that way with the uh, keeps up a lot. Yeah, hundred percent. And shout out to Matt for uh, you know taking chances on bands, right? Because trust me, I have uh, you know talked to bigger labels and they have their own timeline and reasons why they don't want to you know take a chance on a newer band, which is totally fine. But for yeah. these up and coming labels, uh, you know, this is a great way to get established. And also, you know, it, it, it's a cool opportunity for them and for the the newer bands coming up. So for them to have done that with you guys, I, I think is really awesome. And it definitely, you know, put you guys on my radar because I wasn't uh, in tune back when the demo came out. I, I started kept, you know, playing catch up when Remnants came out. Yeah, I think that's um, uh, a lot of people's exposure to the band was also was, was that EP because uh you know the de- the demo came out like many years before that already at that point so um if someone were to like find out what it was I feel like they'd question like oh is this band even still active like they don't really have too much stuff out so the fact that years later this one this newer release came out like newer being like last April I think it was is when that remnants tape came out mm-hmm. um it kind of introduce like the whole band and it caught people's uh, attention you know people like you were like oh you know this band was kind of under the radar for a little bit so that's cool that it it did that that was kind of what i was what i was hoping it would um mm-hmm. do you know 100 percent. and as far as uh your scene up there in san jose uh you know shit's still going crazy right i, I feel like as shows came back um it just kind of opened the floodgates for for all of you up there right there was like that first um rbs show which was insane, which I, I still think about to this day, like how did that, did that even happen and didn't get shut down with like all the like crazy amount of people that were there. And then you see the success of drain, uh, scowl, uh, and like, I'm obviously it, it's sad to see Gulch, uh, you know, c- kind of, you know, hanging it up and they're you know, playing their last string of shows. That's a bummer, but still like, even with the loss of Gulch, uh, everyone up there, like I, it seems like you guys are still just killing it and just kind of taking the whole world by storm. Yeah, yeah, I'm really, you know, I'm super thankful to be from this scene, and it's not just because like of a time like now, where like how you said, like, you know, bands are are popping off and, do, and doing really cool things. It seems doing really cool things, even like before that, dude. I've I've always rode for San Jose specifically in the in the Bay Area because that's where I'm from, and you know, this is the, you know, when I found out that there was local hardcore in San Jose, like within my city, like from then it was like i would try to go to every show as much as i could whether it be like you know whether i was the only one watching or whether it was like a bigger tour package that came to like uh you know another another city like like oakland at the time used to have like shows at like a a bigger venue called the oakland metro and like like those shows you'd have a you know a good amount of people at like some people who wouldn't go to local shows or some people from all around the bay would obviously go to the, the bigger tour package that were held there but um you know, since I first started going to shows, it's always been about San Jose to me. That's always what's been important. You know, starting a band when I was like younger, all I really wanted to do was, was play in San Jose and play to, you know, like younger kids like myself or to just regular showgoers from the scene. That, that was like all I really could have asked for, something like that. So, I mean, it makes me proud to say that like I'm from here with all the success that my other friends' bands are doing right now on like a much bigger scale at this point, you know? Yeah, 100%. And I feel like. It's just a matter of time for Fields of Flames. Um, if you guys want to, you know, take it to that level, I, I feel like with the new music that's coming out, that you guys can totally, you know, uh, get to that scale if you want to. Wow, dude! Thank you for, you know, thank you for believing it that much. I mean, I feel like, uh, not that I, I don't believe in in the the music as well, but I think it's just, uh, it's just overwhelming for me to ever think like something I, that I could be a part of could ever be like. Um, you know, even at a level like this, comparable to like some of my friends' bands that are that are like awesome, that are all my personal favorite bands. So, um, it's cool to hear you say that. Thank you, appreciate it. No, hundred percent. You know, I'm. Um, I felt like when I saw you guys at that Drain and Pain of Truth show, I was like, okay, cool. This is, uh, you know, it's been a minute since I saw you guys live, and I was like, they definitely are, are still solid. 
And even I have friends on the East Coast uh, who are in tune with Field of Flames and are you know really excited about the music that is already out and then looking forward to the new album that's coming out. So I, I feel like, you know, people know about your band and like actually enjoy it. It's not just me, you know, blowing smoke up your ass just because we're friends. Like I actually really do think of Field of Flames is like, you know, you guys, uh, you know, could be that band to carry that torch for the scene up there. Cause you know, you, you look at like the whole new crop of bands that, that are coming out from out there. Right. There's, um, uh, well, not new bands, but uh, no right talking about writing new music, spine breakers coming back, doing new shit, which I'm really excited about. Uh, big yeah. boy, uh, doomsday eightfold path. So there's just so much cool shit going on up there. Um, that I think, you know, like any of those bands, uh, you know, has the potential to, you know, take it to the next level just as long as, you know, they would like to. Yeah, man, I, I think it's really cool now, too, that all those bands that you listed are all from the Bay Area or from San Jose or the Bay Area or Santa Cruz, whatever it be it. And um, all sound totally different. And I think it's so cool now that um, all of it is like, coming from the hardcore scene, it can be considered hardcore, regardless of like the the different sub genres that some of them may be, you know, whether it be a kind of more heavier sounding band or like maybe mm-hmm. band, like you mentioned Doomsday, my homie's bands that is a little more on the faster side. They have like guitar solos and it's uh, you know, very upbeat and all of it is still like hardcore to me. And I think it's so cool that people like appreciate it regardless of like what it what it is, you know, or what it what it sounds like just before you know, I feel like being from San Jose, a lot of the bands that I remember seeing growing up that, um, you know, when I first started going to shows weren't necessarily hardcore, like the way we know it today. It was kind of more catered towards like a metal core or even like death core influence sound, you know, like more, definitely more metal influence, I guess you can say, with like, like drop tuning type of shit. And, you know, if it didn't sound like that, a lot of people were kind of like, oh, I can't really mosh. This isn't really that cool, you know, mm-hmm. and people were kind of picky about it, I think. But, um, you know, I think it's cool now that everyone kind of appreciates the dynamic and variety that's that's being put out there now and how it's all just, um, it's all hardcore, you know? Yeah, 100%. Yeah, like the, the, the lines are just getting a little less uh, blurred, right? Everybody's a little more accepting and realizing that it's okay to like different types of music. You don't have to kind of just focus on one subgenre and kind of just ride for that. You can literally enjoy multiple because there's a lot of these mixed bills that are you know coming back and happening a lot more often than it used to. Yeah, definitely. And I, um, you know, and from when I started listening to hardcore, I kind of felt like, um, um, how should I say it? I don't know. I feel like I also just kind of enjoyed that a lot more too. Like myself, even like when I was younger, like I liked bands like Terror, obviously, and then I also really liked um, more fast bands. I guess you can say like I used to like that band Outbreak mm-hmm. a lot, and then I liked um, some of the sound that like like bands like Kids Like Us did or like Guns Up. So like you know, there, there were so many different types of like sounds that I personally enjoyed and i like seeing now that that can be compared to like um you know hardcore now with everyone also enjoying the variety that we have i guess and we're halfway through uh we're almost halfway through about halfway through uh, the year 2022 and uh, field of flames has some shows booked uh, you know you're going out of state uh, you got some cool local stuff but is that what you want to do with the band? Get busier and travel more and play shows in a ton of different areas? 100%. Yeah, that's what I want to do with the band more. I mean, like, I'm, I feel like um, that's that's something I've always wanted to do. You know, like put, putting on music is one thing and, and playing shows for my own area that I'm that I'm from. But, you know, like playing like even outside of California is like something like an opportunity that's that's come my way that I feel like I, I can't pass up or that I should try to seek out as best I can, you know, because especially what you said, how many people are like noticing it. And I'm kind of, I kind of noticed sometimes seeing people like tweet about the band too, or, or post about it. I'm like, wow, people are kind of interested in this. So, you know, I feel like I should, um, let them, uh, hear the music live, you know, hundred <laughs> percent. And I'm really stoked for you guys to uh, play that Philly show. Um, I just hearing about how crazy it was when tickets went on sale for that show. And obviously, 
um, you know, it's a big deal because it's uh, Gulch's final time in Philly. And obviously the other bands on it, my friends in Cut Down, um, End It. Um, I'm not sure about the other band, Mo- Molek. I-, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Um, but I- I'm just looking forward to you guys getting out there and playing that venue, but also playing in front of that whole crowd. Because I know there's a lot of people who it's going to be their first time to be able to see you guys live. And it- I-, I know it's going to be a good time for them. Yeah, it's going to be a good time for, you know, I, th- I think, for all the bands and everyone watching as well. I'm really excited to see End It um, again, because I saw them uh, at FYA back in January. That was my first time hearing or seeing about uh, hearing about the band and seeing the band for the first time. Mm-hmm. At that fest, I think there was only like two bands I didn't watch, because every time I go to a any kind of like hardcore fest, I always try to watch every single band. Like, you know, there was... There's only two that I really was just so tired where I couldn't, but and it was like a really good band. I was super impressed with like their their set and like how how much I was missing out on because I saw everyone else enjoying it. Like knowing the words, I was like, oh shit, this is like where have I been? Why did I not like check this band out before I came to this fest? So um, I'm excited to be playing with them, and I'm gonna I'm gonna go crazy for sure. Hundred percent. They're an awesome band. Yeah, they they definitely bring good energy live, and they they sound really good too. So shout out to um, Baltimore Hardcore. Shout out, um, end it. Shout out the homie yep. Akil. We got to get him back on the podcast. But yeah, it, it's it's gonna be a good time. And it, you know, um, uh, bringing up Fya. Now that I'm thinking back, I did see you like a lot. You know more than uh, you know. I, I can you know, think about other people that like that I saw consistently throughout the whole weekend. But yeah, I, I definitely kept running into you. So you, you definitely were um, you know watching a lot of bands. Yeah, I tried, like I said, try to watch every band. I don't really um, I, I didn't really interact with too many people besides like people I flew there with. So um, and when the band wasn't playing, I was kind of just walking around trying to like buy something from one of the bands or or check out like other stuff that people were putting on the tables and. You know, I, I just like being present in the moment as much as I can, you know, and, and just enjoy it. And it was awesome. It was, it was probably the most fun hardcore fest I've gone to or in here. hundred percent. And I feel like that's the best way to do it because you never really know, um, you know, what kind of performances people are going to bring or if that might be your last time seeing that band, especially if, if they're not like a local band, right? Because it could be just some band that is from another state and they end up breaking up. So, yeah, I, I always try to do the same, too. I, I always just try to be present and just try to soak up as much as i can while i'm there especially when i'm obviously like on the other side of the country and you know getting to do something that i don't normally get to do for a weekend yeah yeah i i feel the same way i think specifically the two opener bands that um they were called contention on one of the days i think domain mm-hmm. i don't know if they're on day or if they're on two days i think they're both from florida i know one of them is yeah they're but, they're both from florida okay and they're both fucking sick and i was like really hoping that like the room was gonna be totally packed up to see them all. i mean people obviously trickling in it was kind of like early on in the afternoon but um you know i think their reaction was still sick i thought their performance was even was even better dude it was fucking awesome the contention is sick mm-hmm. okay and i just want to ask you a, a couple things uh, about the record um so it's been about a year since Remnants came out. And did you want to release the new record, Constructing a War Against You, in April as well? Is there like a, like some sort of a specific reason that these two releases are uh, coming out the same month, just a year apart? Um, I would like to say, yeah, but honestly, no, dude. It kind of just worked out that way. I think um, that came out April of last year, 2021. I think we got hit up to record this newer album by Indecision Records. I think it was like, remember, I think it was like June or July. I think it was July. And I was so like ready to go with that opportunity that, um, you know, we recorded it like in August, I think. And just the whole process of like getting it totally finalized and mastered with everybody's vocal parts on it and, um, you know, getting the cover and the inserts for all like the physical copies of music and everything. And for it to finally put out like, through the record plans physically to have the copies in hand it just happened to work out where april was the was the date so it was literally by coincidence i guess Mm -hmm. okay and as far as the uh writing process for the record can you talk about what that was like for you and the band yeah so um i guess you can say it was pretty hasty like it was done pretty quickly because i um 
not that it was done quickly as in like there wasn't any thought process or like um effort into the music that's not what i'm trying to say at all but um you know there, there was only really three brand brand new songs on the on the lp on the and two of them being the the two intro songs and there was like a instrumental track that's that's on there as well and the writing process for those was uh it, it wasn't complicated i guess you can say i mean like we're all pretty like in tune with like our styles of like what we're interested in and how we play and like um we kind of wanted it to be balanced out with uh the rest of the recordings on the album which two of them are re-recordings actually of older tracks and i was like well if they're going to be back to back on the record and you're listening to them track one track two track three and so on are they like cohesive you know like did they sound like it's a continuation of some of these older songs that people might not have heard before and it actually was and it was most more than um how do i say it it was just fluid i guess it was a really fluid process and it wasn't complicated at all so when we we're ready to go it was um you know everything was recorded and not very many takes you know okay and I, I'm just curious about the title of the record, because obviously there's the the title track, which was the single that you guys released. Uh, I'm just curious uh, how you landed on that name for the album. That name was actually brought up by um, an old um, CEO of mine in the military. He said uh, he said that term construct a war. I remember he said that one time as like a joke in um in this little hut that we had like a training exercise in basically. And he mentioned that to someone and I kind of liked how he said that. I forgot what he was in reference to or why he said that, but I remember we were joking about something and he said like construct a war, constructing a war. And then I just added the against you to it at the end of it. So like that technically wasn't really made by me. It was made by him. And I don't think he even knows that it was used in a, in a record title, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's a good guy. And his name is Adam staff. And he was my old company commander for uh this uh, infantry company that I used to be a part of on like a deployment I did in the Marine Corps. Well, and are you still in, in contact with him at all? Um, I, on Facebook, I am. I'm not sure where, what he's doing now or where he's at because like as soon as we kind of like departed from that whole deployment, everyone kind of like went separate ways and I don't know mm -hmm. where he's working at now, but he still uh, serves as a officer in the military. I just don't know. Don't know where he's at or anything, but every now and then I'll see him like post about like his family mm -hmm. or like of like their vacations that they go on and stuff but um i doubt he'll remember that he even said that that term or whatever if i said like hey remember that one time you said this like, probably fucking won't at all that's crazy because like yeah just like that that one line just kind of turned into this whole thing and um i think it'd be cool to get him like a record and he'd be like he'd probably be like, what the hell is this for like why yeah, are you, like, why are you giving me yeah. this record but that, yeah. that, that, that that's a cool backstory i i definitely like that a lot yeah. um okay and that would 2019 is when I first heard that, I think. So 20, uh, yeah, it was even before the the Remnants, like, EP came out. That term was, like, where I heard that from was, I think, 2019 or 2020. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you've just been kind of, like, just sitting on it for a while? Yeah, it's literally been, like, in the notes on my phone for, like, a while. And I just use it. Okay, and... Uh, I, I'm just curious. Uh, there's, you know, some guest spots that you briefly mentioned on. Uh, can you speak about, uh, you know, um, who's on the record? Yeah, I think um, in order. I think I even listed it on like the credits for like the album, like in, in like order of how the the tracks are. Mm -hmm. uh, the first one being my buddy Elliot, who uh, who sings in Gulch, um, who I've been friends with for a while, who's also here from san jose um i want as many of my friends as i could to to be on like uh you know the songs or contribute in some kind of way so he was on the first song and uh my buddy malachi was on the second song uh, which is the the title track one he actually wow. wrote that um, those lyrics for that part that he did uh, i just told him like yo this is what the song's about you know pretty straightforward this is it it's like cool i'll write something and he sent that back over sent that back over to me i think even without me knowing what the lyrics were and uh i thought it was fucking sick mm, who else is on it let me think let me think oh my buddy adrian is on uh, one of the songs too and he plays guitar in big boy and uh he was also on uh, one of the the songs called fallen angel which is on the 
the Remnants EP as well. That's also him on that track. So he's on two of our songs. Um, let me think. Let me think. Wait, I'm so stupid. <laughs> Disregard that. I'm thinking of that's the same song I'm thinking of. Never mind. I'm thinking of them in order. It's so weird. You can't even cut that part out. Um, who else is on it, dude? Honestly, oh, I'm, my buddy. I'm, I'm like looking at the, the the thank yous. There's like a whole like list of people, so I'm just like I'm not sure like you know the, the exact okay. order. <laughs> yeah, each, each one, one of them. It's not, it's not Fallen Angel. My buddy Leo from he sings in Out of Pocket. He's on um that song State of Regression. That's um, a good song. That might be my favorite you. song. Thank you. Mm. Uh, I can't think of anything right right now. I'm kind of blanking out. I think my brain is just mush from from work today, but bottom line of friends i just wanted to have like as many of my friends as i could on the songs and i thought it'd be cool to have other friends who front other bands as well so that's why i specifically got those three that i mentioned right now off the bat to to do those parts and shout out to, to ian for working on the, the the album layout yeah dude, he does he does great work and um you know everything we've done like as far as like designs mm-hmm have been through two people. It's been through my buddy, um, Uriel. He lives here in San Jose as well. He goes by Udi. We call him Udi. And then Ian. So those are the two people I do designs for us. Ian's done like the, I think one time you mentioned that you like the shirt with the flames through the, the lowercase like mm-hmm. logo. Yeah. That's super sick. Yeah. Like he did that one. Um, he did the insert for all of our artwork and then the, you know, the back of it as well. And the photo that was on the back of the actual CD with the, all of us on it that was taken by um my buddy brandon who sings in dig boy okay and i i'm just curious about this photo right here with you like uh you know double fisting uh, these mics wait it's, it's on your instagram for, for people who, who follow you on on instagram hold on whoops this way and I, i'm just curious if you, if you can uh, break down about like you know what show that was at and like you know uh, why yeah. you did that in that moment um i forgot exactly why i think um so that that show was at venue called the x-bar which is like a bowling alley slash venue i guess here in san jose or it's in cupertino but i mean it's like san jose proper i still consider that like san jose area but it's like Mm -hmm. west san jose technically and um that show was the show that we headlined with extinguish big boy out of pocket and i think eightfold path and that was in august of last year i don't know who took that photo i really wanted to that photo i don't remember um, we kind of just gathered a bunch of photos that I saw from online and mm-hmm. we submitted them to be able to be put into that collage or to that, that insert. And then uh, it's funny because if you look to the bottom right of me, you see Adrian like looking up to his left and he's like smiling at me kind of while I was doing that. And I don't know why I ended up yelling to two mics. I think it's because the volume on it was just really low or I thought it was low. So I yelled into, you know, one of the stage mics to, make it louder basically but i'm also pretty deaf so i mean i think i can't hear myself but like other people can probably hear me just fine that's interesting i, I had no idea you were uh, you know hard of hearing yeah I'm, I'm pretty hard of hearing and shit like that i have like i don't know if i like, undiagnosed I'm tinnitus, but i get like sometimes i get like random periods of ringing in my ears and stuff every now and then okay and you mentioned that that photo on the back when i think to the show with drain and pain of truth uh, it looked like a, a little bit of a different lineup i don't know if people were like sick that day or if there was um you know, you know some member changes yeah so um the back of that photo or the correction the back of the cd with the photo of all five of us um all of us played except our buddy hector who doesn't play drums in the band anymore so angel plays in the band now and angel you're familiar with angel he sings in the band dare and the mm-hmm. band abrasion as well and I think for that show, um, our guitarist, Ged, who plays guitar and Extinguished, couldn't make it to that 1720 Los Angeles show that you saw us play at. Mm-hmm. So it was only, so on the back of that CD, basically only three of us in that photo were actually at that show. Playing. Okay, yeah, because yeah, I, I was seeing Joseph playing out of two amps, and I'm like, oh, is this like how they're going to run it from now on? Um, yeah, but- it was just a time where it, um, it worked out that way due to like some something that uh get had come up i guess that you know we couldn't make it down in time but it was all good 
Yeah. And, uh, you know, I'm sure you had a good time with that show. I, I still remember going to buy merch from you and you not having any just because um, you guys had sold out. I was like, holy shit, that's crazy. But I was stoked for you guys. Oh, thank you, dude. Yeah, I had, I had a good time at that show. I mean, um, sometimes if you, you can ask everybody else like in the band, too, I, I'm kind of hard on myself sometimes about like how the how like the songs are like executed or how I sound like during certain parts. And I kind of like nitpick it a lot and dwell on like, damn, everybody noticed this or this was really bad. Like, I hope no one filmed it. I remember I kept telling myself like, dude, I, I really don't like the way I sound. It's like kind of lost my voice um, during like the second or third song, like right, right, right away, like right off the bat. It's like, fuck, I hope no one like filmed this. And next thing you know, there's like on YouTube, there's three versions of, the, of the, that whole set from three different people filming the full thing. And I was like, geez, and listening back to it, it really wasn't, it wasn't bad at all. It, it really wasn't. And, um, you know, I didn't let it get to me though. Cause the rest of the time at that show, I had a really fucking good time. Like every band was like just as sick as the night before. Cause I saw him, I think it was the night before where I saw him at the, the San Jose one. Mm-hmm. And yeah. That, you know, Drain sounded fucking crazy. Pain and Truth sounded fucking crazy. Ingrown was sick. Vomacara was insane. I haven't seen Vomacara with their newer lineup um, at all yet. So that show was my first time seeing their seeing them with the new lineup and the vocals sounded fucking psycho, dude. It was awesome. Yeah, th- honestly, that was my first time seeing them too because uh, I didn't see them on the tour when they got the new lineup. Um, and then, uh, yeah, and I just have missed them until that night and i was just like just thinking about damn i don't remember them being this heavy because obviously i i knew that you know they, they were pretty heavy to begin with but that night it, yeah they just sounded crazy yeah it was fucking nuts dude people are like people are going off for it people down there love them and you know whenever they play the bay people up here love them too and, and it's sick i yeah, I've been listening to that band for a long time and they're they're cool people okay and record comes out tomorrow of like of like us dropping this podcast um are you like relieved that it's finally going to be out and out there in the wild for people to, you know, consume and, you know, form their own opinions on it? Yeah. I'm glad people have more music to listen to, to base like an opinion on whether they like us or not, or like what we kind of, what kind of style we are really to them. And, you know, just, just get, get a better understanding, like what people kind of like think of the band. Cause, um, you know, so far the feedback has been like good for like what we have out so far. And I'm mm-hmm. glad they'll be like, more of a product out there for people to to check out and and some of these songs like i've been listening to over and over and over again and i'm so i'm like kind of sick of it at this point and i think that's the i think that's the process for most people when they release music they they re-listen to those tracks before they come out probably a million times and the day it actually comes out like you kind of just relieve like oh man let's get on to the next project ready we're going to start writing for another thing already you know Mm -hmm. kind of like that so um i'm excited that they'll finally be out so i can um, I don't know, it's kind of like a sense of relief, that's for sure, because, you know, they've been under our belt for a while now, so I think it's time people hear it, and hopefully people enjoy it. And the vinyl sold out, do you know if there will be a, a second pressing? Um, from what I was told that there would be a second pressing, I think, um, so the vinyl pre-order, I think there was like 200 copies, I think, and I don't remember what colors there were, I think there was like a, like a blue one and like a stone color kind of i think there was only two colors but i remember um being told by indecision that you know these are to these colors are to get like some just something out there right now because there's not um it's kind of like a little back order on like stuff that's like more custom like splattered style like Mm -hmm. records and shit shit like that so he's like let's get these ones out first and then on the next pressings we'll have like you know other variants other colors and stuff like that so there's definitely going to be more in the future. I think these 200 is just the, the beginning of them, like I was saying. Mm-hmm. For sure. And I, I think that's a, a, a great thing and a, kind of a good way to kind of gauge that, you know, there's at least 200 people out there that like the record enough to, to pre-order it, knowing the whole vinyl situation. So that's definitely yeah. like a, an awesome thing to, to know right before, or not even right before, but to know before the record is even out that it, the first pressing is completely sold out. Yeah, I know. That, that, dude, that's insane to me that it was sold out i thought like um, i forgot how you found out they were sold i think someone messaged me saying like do you have any more i went on their website and it was sold out and i was like they really i was like so surprised like they really all sold out like 200 of them like that's it's a lot i I didn't expect that you know so Mm -hmm. um i don't know that's just it's awesome you know 
Hundred percent, and I'm sure. Like, I guarantee you, after people hear the whole record, there's gonna be way more people wishing and wanting for that second pressing. And uh, last thing uh, about the band, uh, will there be a, a proper record release show for uh, you know uh, constructing a war against you? Um. So we were planning on doing a a record re- release show, and uh, I won't go into details about exactly why it's not happening anymore because it was. It's going to happen. Um, there's some reasons where that like kind of fell through. We, mm-hmm. we wanted all our friends' bands to be on it. We want it to be in San Jose. We want it to be during the time frame of, you know, like April, May or when this is coming out. And um, it just, uh, I guess it's, just, it's not going to work out at this time, I guess. I don't know. But, but at the same time, I don't really care whether it's like a proper record release show. I just wanted a show with all my friends' bands mm-hmm. and my play and that's really that's really it you know and then um the next show we're playing in san jose by the time that the album comes out is may 7th i think 6th or 7th and that's going to be with restraining order and who else is playing that show it's a san jose show where Um, we're playing with restraining order but that tour is going down a is in southern california is why i think it's like a midnight hour and a program one two yeah we're not on those two ones but um Anyways, bottom line is that during that San Jose show, we are going to have, uh, I think, up like 30 or 40 copies of the vinyl available that we have to sell mm-hmm. uh, at the actual show as well. So I guess you can say that'd be like a record release like set because we're actually going to have physical copies at that show. But, um, you know, I mean, I'm not one to really care for like whether it's like a record release show or not. You know, I just want to see my band's playing alongside like all of my friends bands and that's about it and you know we're lucky enough to have that like pretty often actually you know mm-hmm. so you know what i hear uh pretty often is uh you know as popular uh and as good as all the bands are up in the the bay like why hasn't there been like a rbs uh you know tour of all you guys together because you know you guys kind of did that when you went to texas right i was kind of surprised that like so many of you went to texas together um so shout out to whoever had the foresight to book that kind of show out there but um has there ever been talk like amongst you guys to do a a tour like that because i think that would be pretty insane um yeah i've never been brought into a conversation where that where that was talked about i don't know if any of my other friends have, have talked about that amongst themselves with, with their bands being like, um, you know, on a, on a much bigger level than, than Field of Flames. But um, yeah, they did recently in, in Texas where they where they went out there and, and played. It was like, uh, I'm trying to think of Northern California bands that play. Tsunami did, right? And mm-hmm. Riot did and Extinguished did. Drain did because they were already a part of that tour, I think. Yeah, Gulch was there. Oh yeah, Gulch was there. So those are already like multiple Northern California bands that went out there and um that was during the oh. time i was at disneyland i think and that and yeah we had talked about yeah. that I, i'd ask you about yeah. that my with my girlfriend and um you know we, we i got to miss that show which is you know it, it, it's fine I, I wasn't like too upset about it or anything like that I, I had a good time hanging out with her and that's something we had already planned and i was gonna commit to that because you know i'm a good person like that and i don't want to fucking be like, sorry, I have to go to the show over in Texas, which, you know, I would have loved to have been at, been there too. I wish there was a way I could be like, you know, I'll enjoy the day here and then like at night go to Texas and then come back the next day, you know, something like that would have been, would have been cool to do, <laughs> you know, but that it doesn't work that way. So, yeah, it's just a little too far apart. And yeah. Uh, Okay, yeah, and uh, I, I I don't know. I just think about Texas. I, I just keep thinking about uh, Toshio and uh, how, how he got sick. Uh, I'm sure he's better by now. So shout out Charles. Oh, he got sick. That sucks. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why that just popped in my head, uh, but I was, uh, I'm was i a huge fan of No Riot. I, I love Charles. Uh, he's an awesome person, so uh, shout out to him. Yeah, he's a awesome person. He's a fucking great guitar player, dude. <laughs> yeah, super talented. Looking forward yeah. to new tracks from No Right. But Thanks. I want to segue, you know, you bring up Disneyland. I, I was finding a way to, to kind of wedge this in here, but, okay. um, you know, obviously we, we both love Disneyland. I still go every week uh, not as much as i used to because it's just like i feel like i'm just in this weird gray area where i'm like over it but then there's some days where i'll go and it's actually a good time so i'm like okay maybe i'm not completely over this because it's not 
that bad all the time. But I, I'm just curious for uh, you who, you know, you don't get to come down here that often. I, I'm just curious to hear about what your time was like for the couple of days that you spent down here. Dude, it's funny that you use the word over it because for some reason, like the last two times me and my girlfriend went, actually we've gone uh, three times in the last year. This, you know, March being our third time going in, in the last year since um 2021. I think summer 2021 we went. Then we went to Christmas and then we went again to like, uh, you know, last month and the word over it is like, dude, I, I couldn't have said it better. Like for some, for some reason, I'm just like, I don't know what it is about it. Like now it's like not hitting the same that the way it used to. And I used to like love going to Disneyland. Like, and we look forward to it and it was obviously a really good time and we got to go on everything we wanted to, but just like the, the crowds of people and how you go about like scheduling, getting on rides and like getting food now or getting in like, it's a lot of like, um, I don't know, everything involves like using your phone. And I hate like using my phone to like download app and scan this. And do, I absolutely hate that shit, dude. I hate it so much. Like I hate going to even like faster restaurants and they have like kiosks where you order right there. And you have to like tap the big screens up. They have like, dude, that shit annoys me so much. I feel like it's such, um, not just like slower of a process, but like, I don't know. I think it's just like just stupid. I don't know. I don't think it makes things more efficient or or better in any way so um i don't know I, I guess i can say that i'm just kind of over the way they're like running stuff too at disneyland i, I definitely agree because it, it feels like it's like a lot of like forced waiting right they're like hey pick your your window of time and then yeah. let us know when you're here and then we'll make your food but it just like, yeah, like w when I think about it, sometimes I'm like, OK, like I can see how maybe it can uh, benefit like, you know, like, you know, mitigating lines and stuff. But then there's other times where like me and my buddy, um, you know, Andy, who you met when we were there, like we would mobile order food from this truck that you could only order through mobile order. And then we're stuck waiting over 30 minutes just because it got stuck in the system of, uh, you know, getting processed. And we're just kind of like, and then yeah. we, had to, we had to go to the window, like, yo, like, you know, we're not trying to be rude, but like, it's been, you know, you know, you're supposed to make our baked potato like 30 minutes yeah. ago, like, like what's going on. And they're like, Oh my bad. Like, um, it's like right here. And we're just like, dude, this is so stupid. Yeah. I, um, I think when I was there and I ran into you guys, I was explaining that the last, last time I went, I went to like the, the cones and the fucking cars line area and they have like like popcorn and shit and we wanted popcorn and um i go up to the window and they say oh you have to do it on the app like, mm. okay i'll do it on the apps and, they, and i look through the, the back in the kitchen now like a bunch of like popcorns lined up with like receipts based off of like you know the time windows and what people ordered so i just like took two steps away from the window and ordered it on my phone and then like it had to fall within a certain window so yeah i had the same problem where i was like waiting like 15 minutes or so for them to finally call me and bring it out and i i don't know really i don't think i really enhance like the experience of like the disney park goers like and i, I don't see how it does or makes it quicker maybe if like the volume of the of the um the capacity is like really high and there's like a lot of people and there's like something like a like a big restaurant like the carte circle or something like that i i understand would, would need some kind of system with that but also yeah, i'm trying to get like a when the fucking six dollar popcorn really quick you know and it ends up being like kind of like a mission really yeah no i i, I totally agree like how does it save time or make it more efficient you know for her to not just take your order when you're standing right there and the popcorn's like right behind them and there's nobody else there just yeah yeah that, that kind like, of stuff just doesn't really make sense to me yeah little things like that though are kind of making me go like, yeah this is kind of like it's kind of bogus whatever yeah. And then also like, and I get it, like the app's not going to be a hundred percent perfect, but I hate when I'm walking to the gate and I, you know, I, I have, um, uh, so my like Disney favors AT&T, right? They have some sort of partnership. So if you have AT&T, like you have great service in the park, but if you don't have AT&T like me, you have, you know, pretty shoddy service. So sometimes when I'm you know, driving up to the parking attendant and Mickey and friends, or even when I'm walking to the gate, I'm opening my app to try to pull up my pass 
to get scanned in and the app is either super buggy and doesn't load it or it crashes or I, I have no service so I can't even you know uh, get to the menus to, to go to my pass and I think that's where I get most like frustrated because I, I get obviously I'm sure they're saving a lot on costs on not having to have physical passes anymore because I'm sure like all that plastic for those passes uh, you know is, is pretty expensive and uh, definitely wasteful but to not have something that I don't need the internet to use is uh, just a, a pain sometimes. Yeah, dude, going on my phone, pulling out the app, like, I think I'd have to, like, I don't even have to, like, download it on my phone. I, every time I go, I have to, like, re-download it because I just, I don't want to have it on my phone. I just delete it and I, I re-download just to check the times. But I had to, like, log in and create, like, a Disney account and, like, do all this stuff and have all my shit, like, on there. And it was kind of just, like, ugh, it's just tedious and, like, I'm hella stupid and slow and I don't like doing shit like that. I get like impatient pretty easily when it comes to shit like that when it has to deal with like you know, like apps or like anything that's to do with like fucking technology stuff like, I, I have no patience for really. Yeah, for sure. And I, I'm just curious with the time that you spent last time, uh, can you talk about like you know, like some of your like favorite moments from this past trip? Mm, let me see. What did I enjoy this last trip? Well, I thought, um, you know, I, I don't really collect pins like all the time. I kind of only get them when I see something that I really like. That's really cool. Mm -hmm. and, and even then, I don't really like the super expensive ones, like the pins that you can like interact with kind of like it has like a knob on it or has some kind of like something that spins or some shit. Mm -hmm. I kind of like the more simple ones. But uh, also my girlfriend's like, I kind of actually want to go into like the, the stores that sell the pin and try to find something cool like i don't really ever like actually go look for them anymore like when i was a kid i used to like looking for stuff that's cool so we went in and uh she's like okay i'll buy you one. I'll look, you don't get to buy me what the fuck and she's like and i told her i'll buy you one then so we walked around the store and we chose like random ones for each other mm -hmm. and um i chose like this uh this common like pixar one that you could you can get just about at any like of the pin store location it wasn't like anything like exclusive or or really fancy but uh i think she just liked the way that the there's like the toy story alien is on it and she liked the way that he looked kind of like cartoony like he was like drawn kind of like funny looking mm -hmm. and the one she got me was like a the soren around the world like pin with like the wings on like the the mickey head or something i fucking love that ride that ride's like super fun so uh that's a cool memory from that the last visit i guess that's Which awesome is, yeah, and that's what I like about pins too, right? Because obviously, um, there are the the more expensive pins, but um, you know, having that story behind that uh, makes it way more cooler than having some rare pin that you know. Oh, I, I just got it because it was a lot of money, you know. Yeah, th there was um, there was a really cool like, exclusive like one that I saw like that. They, um, they have them like showcased in like a like in the glass times or like behind mm -hmm. the counter. I think it was it was like St. Patrick's Day, or it was like a. Or like a 2022 one. I don't remember, but I just know it had Kermit the Frog on it. And Kermit the Frog is sick, and I hella wanted it, but I didn't end up buying it. Because so I was like, yeah, I don't really want to spend all that money on this, on an exclusive pin. I was like, I don't really care that much. But I wish they did integrate Kermit the Frog a little more on some of their newer stuff, which they don't. Yeah, I feel like you got to go to uh, Disney World for that kind of stuff. Yeah, they have a lot of that shit over there with, with him for Shark the Muppets stuff. Yeah, you know, I, I have uh, two lanyards of pins, and like one is like all, all Aladdin stuff. It's like a lot of um, Aladdin and Jasmine, um, which I just kind of just buy random stuff uh, for. But then I have the second one. It's like all Frozen like pins, and that was all. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Oh, I said, oh, that's. Oh yeah, that's for sure. Th thank you. Um, and that was all started because one day I went into the magic shop where my buddy uh, Johnny works. He's the manager there. Um, and he's always like, you know, uh, things getting turned into him or he's just finding like random stuff on the ground. And one day uh, I was in there just hanging out and he had this uh, Elsa pin. He's like, here, he's like, this is for you. And I'm like, dude, I was like, don't give me that because that means I have to start a frozen lanyard. And yeah. he was just like, he's like, just take it. And I'm like, all right. So that's like the one pin on that lanyard that like is like a like a staple. Like I'll get rid of everything else. But that's like the one. And, and it's just uh, you know, just a normal Elsa one, just her and her white dress. And um, but like, you know, the, the, the backstory behind that means a lot you know because it was a gift from like one of my close friends yeah and, you know something like a i don't know i think pins are like a cool way that, that disney used to um you know offer those kind of like 
um, you know, potentially offers those kind of memories for, you know, same with like, uh, um, like the ears, you know, you can do people do like custom ears and shit like that. Mm-hmm. When you have like your phone on it, you can remember that you got that, that one time you went like, you know, however long ago or whatever. I remember, I think my brother, my older brother has them from when he was a kid. And, uh, it was just like the classic, like black Mickey ears, but I think his name is like on the back of it, like sewn, like, um, like stitched on it. And, uh, you know, it just makes it that much cooler that it was from that long ago from that one time that we probably don't even remember going because we were so young when we were kids, you know? 100%. Uh, when I go back to my parents' house, they have, um, like, like an old photo of us on Splash Mountain, but it's in, like, this old, like, Splash Mountain frame that they don't even sell anymore with, like, the characters on it. And it's, like, it's all 3D with, um, you know, it's, like, you know, it's not just a flat frame. It's, like, you know, it has, like, all the characters. It has, like, the the um you know the the log that you ride in and i, I just look at it i'm like dude that's so crazy because it, it's it's uh you know definitely vintage because i haven't seen anything like that in the park in, in a long time and especially with like that ride going away at some point um you know it's always yeah. just like a fun memory to look back on when i'm visiting my parents yeah i think disney like vintage stuff i think it's um it's kind of like popular for like those corny vintage kids to like go about to collect like um like vintage Mickey Mouse shit. Cause I've, there's been times where like out of curiosity, I've gone on like eBay and typed in like Disney vintage and dude, there's just so much shit that they have that people like, I'm not sure if it's actually worth anything sometimes mm-hmm. or if it actually sells because sometimes it's listed on eBay with like 10 watchers and it keeps relisting after 30 days forever. And it's always stuff like, you know, picture frames, like you were saying, or like a really old, you know, like, stitched baseball jersey that they had from, like Disney World like in the 90s just some like random mm-hmm. shit you know they, they always have stuff like they have just so much memorabilia but um you know something like uh like a picture frame like that, that's that's something really cool that like I would want like a picture frame I don't really care for like the the clothing aspect too much um old pins old like um shit like that basically that's kind of what I'm getting at yeah, one item that I really want, it's from the 60th anniversary, if I remember correctly. And it's just like they had this like iridescent like license plate frame and it was metal. And I remember um, that whole year I'd always walk by that license plate frame. And I'm like, all right, I'm going to get it one day. I'm going to get it one day. And I just kept passing it up and passing it up. And sure enough, um, the 60th anniversary celebration was over. They got rid of everything. And yeah. the, the only place I can find it is on eBay for like $200, which is like yeah. a, a crazy markup. And I'm like, I, like, I definitely don't want to spend that money on that license plate frame. So I'm going to have to, you know, get something else. And those people are stupid because that's no one's actually going to, I don't think anyone's actually going to buy that for that much money. It's like the same one that you probably saw listed on there is probably more than likely still up. And it's just like relisting itself like over and over because no one actually is like putting the money to, to spend that much money because it's just like, what the hell is this? 200 bucks i'm not gonna buy this yeah because it was just the 60th anniversary there wasn't anything too special i just like the the colorway like if they did a 60 you know uh, whatever year we're on now um you know version i would get it i, I just like the, the the colorway i'm not attached to the year 60 so the um the old world of disney store in downtown disney they used to have like uh you know before they remodeled it a couple years ago when it was like carpet floors mm-hmm. i think it's like in the center of like the store, they used to have that area where it was kind of like a vintage like gallery. I don't know if you remember that. They used to have like figurines and like watches for sale and um, like old like photo books, like Imagineer like photo books and stuff. And like a lot of the stuff in the center of that room was like hundreds of dollars. I don't know if you remember that. No, because I'm trying to think. The only thing I remember is like when they used to sell those like uh, those like designer handbags. They did that too. I think that might have been the same like um part of the store I'm talking about. Cause they did have like watches too that mm-hmm. like like collab watches that they've done. They were like really expensive, like bags. And um I always remember having like like figurines as well, like like ceramic, like haunted mansion, like figurines or some shit like that. But um I, I don't know what happened to or why they don't sell those um items anymore. And if people actually end up like really buying those, because I always see them on display, but I don't know who actually would like buy those things. Cause they're always, they're, they're really expensive when mm-hmm. they're, they're always sitting out behind the, it's like glass casing, like in the shelves and stuff. So I don't know who actually bought those like vintage items or those expensive items. You know, it, it's getting pretty interesting down there. Cause um, last time you were there, I'm not sure how much you explored downtown Disney, 
but at, at this point they like tore down like the the whole like um where like starbucks because you know they, there's two starbucks right there's the one closest to the trams but then there's one like further down by like that old movie theater Mm -hmm. um well they like tore down that building already and they're already like kind of working on construction for like the the whole new like area and like hotel stuff that they're gonna build oh i didn't know they were planning on doing a hotel there so the the movie th was the movie theater even showing movies anymore i don't remember no because um so there was like uh like years ago th there was plans to do uh, like this hotel that like crossed into like an x um, and they they shut down the theater because the theater was going to get incorporated into the new hotel. So um, they're like, they're like, hey, just close down for a little bit and you'll be in the new hotel. But there was drama because um, the blueprints Disney provided um, the first time versus the final time were different because they had like shifted the hotel, like I think like 200 something feet. And the city was like, no, that's not what we agreed on. Um, you yeah. need to do it the original way or we're not doing anything at all. And Disney was like, all right, cool. Like, then let's not do anything at all. And they were at a standstill for like, yeah, for like a really long time. So like, oh, that's why operation. Yeah. yeah. So that's why the theater was closed. That's why ESPN zone was gone. Rainforest cafe went away because, uh, they were gearing up to do this whole new, you know, kind of revamp. Um, oh, okay. yeah, but it, it took way long and it's finally like, things are finally happening. Okay. I know they made that into like a, kind of like star wars like memorabilia store i think it's called like outpost or something mm -hmm. like that or yeah or, something. or i haven't gone to it yet but uh i remember like back in the day it used to be a, a rainforest cafe like you mentioned and uh and that was there for a fucking long time yeah or as i can remember i think as long as i was going to disneyland since i was a kid i i always remember that being there and to this day i don't know anybody who's ever wanted to eat at a rainforest cafe and i need to do i dude yeah, I, I've never went there, and, and even to this day, the, the, that Star Wars store that's there, I've never stepped foot in that building. Yeah, I've never stepped foot in it either. I, I walked past it and just haven't stepped foot in it. Okay, and I, I'm just curious, uh, have you, you know, maybe thought to maybe spice it up and take a break from Disneyland, try to go to uh, another park, like maybe Disney World? Um, I've gone to Disney World before, and that was with, um, with my family, actually. It was like a trip that we planned. Mm -hmm. And uh, crazy because we, you know, growing up, I've never gone on like trips like that with my family. I know some families like, you know, hey, we're going here for this and we're all going to go to Tahoe or we're all going to go to Disney World. And, dude, my family was never one to do anything like that. Our, our like vacations that we went on were to like go visit my dad's side of my family to go see my cousins and like really do nothing. You know, they drink in the backyard. We hang out the, like if they had a pool in their backyard, that's what we would do. You know, so something like a Disney like vacation. I was like, my mom like planned it. I was like, dude, well, how the fuck do you have money to, to do anything like that big, you know? Mm -hmm. But it, it ended up working out. And I went with my, with my mom and my stepdad, as well as my, as well as both my brothers, my older brother and my younger brother. And we were like, this was only a couple of years ago, 2017. So we were already a little older. And I was like, this is weird going on a trip. Like this old is my family, like all like really cohesive like this. And, um, but it was fucking awesome, dude. We got to go to just about every park, I think. We were there for like a week, like seven days in, in Disney World. And we stayed at like one of the Disney hotels as well. And, um, you know, that experience was like totally awesome. I'd love to do it again. I think that would like change up a little bit of the, you know, the kind of boredom that I'm facing right now with like the, the one here in Anaheim. For sure. Yeah. I, I'm, uh, I think it's I'm going on like year two of not going to Disney World because I took a little break, but I'm waiting, waiting until like the the Tron coaster and the Guardians of the Galaxy coaster like opens up out there and kind of give me a, a reason to go out there and try out something new because it, it, it's really fun. But then, um, you know, I was going, um, you know, once or twice a year, like, you know, uh, like a Halloween trip and then like uh, a, a, a spring trip. So I was going out there pretty frequent and, and it was fun. But then when you get to do it so often and not much changes, it's just kind of like, OK, cool. Like I'm here. And then like I would even get like homesick. I'd be like, damn, this is like day two of day, like day two of seven. I want to get the fuck out of here. So, damn. It, it, yeah. So it just kind of got to a point where I'm like, OK, cool. Maybe this was like a, a needed break that I you know, didn't know that I needed. I will say though, what, what I do like about the convenience of just driving like down to Southern California to go to the one in Anaheim is, you know, compared to going somewhere like Disney world where like, you know, Hey, you have seven days, you got to hit as much as you can and do all this. You know what? Whereas like I drive down to Anaheim, I, I have my own car. I don't have to really, you know, go to the park at right when it opens. Mm -hmm. It's like, but no, we, we 
me and my girlfriend, when we went, um, you know, most of the time we got there like later in the day and we really kind of just went on the rides we knew we wanted to go on. So, you know, so we were kind of on the same page with that and it, and it worked out just fine to where I wasn't like, it wasn't totally unenjoyable, like I was saying, but you know, we got to do all the things we wanted to do and um, kind of like at the pace we wanted to do it. And, you know, the mornings we spend like going to get coffee or go find somewhere nearby to eat. So, um, you know, there's, there's less stress and it's, um, you have a little more control about like what you want to do compared to like going on a you know bigger trip, like how you were describing. Mm-hmm. And when you come down here for those Disney trips, do you ever try to squeeze in like maybe a, a, a universal day or like a Knott's Berry Farm day? You know, I've, I've never thought about that. What I really want to do though, is I want to go to, I don't know if anyone down there actually goes to the magic mountain that you pass by when you're going, uh, you know, through the, um, on highway five, like mm-hmm. great. Yeah. And, um, yeah, I would like to one day go go stop by there and go on one of those crazy ass roller coasters. Because every time I see it, I'm like, yeah, I want to fucking go on that. I don't know if anyone down there actually visits that park. Um, I don't know anyone from around here that I know who is really driven down there to just to go to that park. I don't know, but I would like to do something like that. I mean, I've never really tripping too much about like the you know missing like half the day at Disneyland mm-hmm. it's because I'm, you know I I rate these like weird military promo like passes that they offer and uh you know the, the prices on them have changed so before i think it was three day park hopper for like 150 like flat rate of 150 it was like that's a good deal for chill so i you know i'd use it you know i'd use them consecutively either so i'd go like two days and then use the other single day on like um later on in the year or something like that and um the rate changed significantly so now i think we did we did the three day I think it was like two twenty five or something like that for the for the three day, which still was like really cool. And I wasn't really too concerned about like, hey, you know, we paid hunt, we paid like the the regular rate that like um, regular customers would would pay, and have to worry about like doing everything they want to do to make it worth it, kind of, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, hundred percent. If you wanted to do like Universal and like uh, and hit all just the good stuff at Universal, right? There's because not every ride there is good, um, but if you were to do like the Jurassic Park, the Mummy, Transformers, yeah, cool. uh, the Simpsons, the the tram, the main ride at Harry Potter, you could literally squeeze all that in in a couple hours and then go yeah. to go to Disneyland and be like, wow, I can't believe we did two parks in one day. My, my younger brother, Matthew, I think he goes there often. I know, I know it's been a handful of times where I've seen him post He's at Universal. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I don't live in the same house as him. So sometimes, like, where, when did you, like, go down to Universal? And he's like, oh, I'm only here for a day or something. He actually, I think he goes there pretty often. I think he, like, likes Harry Potter mm-hmm. a lot. And, um, and me and him love The Simpsons. Like, I'm, I'm a diehard Simpsons fan. And so is he. And, uh, I think my one thing with Universal is I wish they put, um, more emphasis on like the Simpsons area of their park. I mean, I haven't went to visit it since, um, dude, it's been a long time. I think the last time I went to Universal, like 2012, 2013. Mm -hmm. And uh, I mean, the Simpsons area hasn't expanded. It's obviously still the same. Yeah. But yeah, I always still remember wishing that like it was a, there was more emphasis on it, but that's just me being selfish. I'm a, I love the Simpsons and I prefer that over Jurassic Park personally Mm -hmm. or, they offer in the park yeah i i just feel like that i don't even know how they came to decide to build the theme park the way they did with like the weird like multi-level because it's very weird yeah yeah, it's super strange but um yeah i'm not the biggest universal fan like i'll go every once in a while because my buddy nate um he likes going there and i I know they're opening up like the the uh, mario world stuff or nintendo world stuff like i think like next year or maybe even this year i'm not even sure um so we gotta go check that at some point but um, and even knots too. Like uh, you don't have to hit every ride, but if you hit just like some of the, like the 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 big hitters, because knots is pretty cheap to go to, and it's like not yeah. that far from from Disney. So you could literally, you know, friends and I have done that before too. Like we would go and just get on, on like the rides that we want to, and then realize that yeah, the vibe here isn't as nice as Disneyland. Uh, but some yeah. of the rides are fun. But yeah, let's just go back across town to where we actually you know <laughs> enjoyed the vibe a little yeah. more. Yeah. Um, yeah, you know those parks will be chill with me. I mean. I just have to, I don't know, like I said, I don't really have like a strong desire to, to really hit him up. I think the only one I really want to go on is the, the Magic Mountain fucking crazy roller coasters they have. <laughs> uh, wait, and ha- have you ever been? Um, I have when I, when I was a kid, 
a, a long time ago. I know I have when I was a kid. And um, there had also been times where we would drive to, like, the parking lot where they would have, like, a – they did like, an In-N-Out and, like, a Wendy's. Like, I don't know if it's still there. It's just outside of the park. Um, whenever my cousins would, like, come visit me for, like, the the summer, um, my cousins, they would live down in uh, in El Centro, which is, like, kind of by the border, I think. I don't, I don't really know exactly where El Centro is. Like, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's kind of down there, like, off, like, Highway 8. I, I, I used to have some friends down there, spend some time down yeah, there. Yeah, like, kind of, like, middle of nowhere. I always remember being, like, there's nothing out there, kind of. Yeah. Um, the, we would always drive to that location. And my aunt would drive my cousins to that location also. It's kind of like halfway for like both of our families. Mm -hmm. They would come hang out with us for like the summer. Like, hey, we they want to go visit over there for like a month or whatever. So they'd come all the way to San Jose and we'd hang out here for like a month before they go back home. But I always remember like Magic Mountain was like our, our halfway point that like both our families would like meet at. So we'd pick them up from there. And uh, I think one of the times we, we did go to Magic Mountain when I was like way, way, way young. Dude, the, the only time I ever feel like I'm going to die on a ride is when I'm at that park because the rides are so intense. That's sick. I mean. <laughs> Dude, let's make it happen. I, I'm so down. Yeah. Let's, let's plan a day. I'll, I'll drive up. I, I know I got some friends who would be you know down to go because, you know, well, we're kind of in the same boat, too. That's not really like a like a destination spot for a lot of people. Like we kind of have to go yeah. and like, you know, ask people like, Hey, like we're going to six flags. Does anybody want to go? It's not like people yeah. are dying to get out there just because I think honestly, because of how intense the rides are and it can definitely get really hot up there, especially if you go like during the summer and it, it can be brutal. So like, we got to just kind of like, you know, hope for not a super hot day. Yeah. I, t I, I totally understand that those rides, they do look pretty crazy and it is fucking hot as fuck out there. So I can understand why like, it wouldn't be everyone's like first decision of like where to go hang out at on like a summer day or something like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we'll figure it out. We'll talk about it off air. For sure. Okay. Well, the record is out tomorrow constructing a war against you. Um, I, I, I hope everyone, you know, takes the time to enjoy the record like I did and looks forward to seeing you live, whether it be in Philly or, um, you know, up in San Jose or hopefully, uh, you know, sooner than later, you guys come back down to Southern California so I can see you guys down here again. But I, I really appreciate you taking the time to do the podcast today. It, it definitely means a lot. And it's nice to be able to catch up and talk to you again. Yeah, man. Thanks for, for having me back again to talk to you. And it was a good conversation. Appreciate it. Yeah. And, you know, I, I'm really stoked, too, because I finally get to post that picture <laughs> that you and I took um, in Adventureland because I've been sitting on it for a really long time. So, oh, I'm, yeah. ha <laughs> so I'm, I'm happy to finally be able to post it. it it's it's so funny because um, I, I, I look like such a fan holding the the CD um, right there yeah. in Disney with it. So I'm, I'm, I'm pretty happy to finally be able to post that. Hell yeah. I, I like the, um, the picture of it next to the food. That was sick. Okay. Hell yeah. Yeah. I, I had a flex on everybody to, to, to let them know that I got that advanced copy way back when. Oh, and like the CBC sitting next to it. That one's cool. All right. Well, um, and before we go, is there anything else you would like to say? Um, no, man. Thanks for having me. Shout out all the bands that, you know, I, I always continue to mention and support, you know, Big Boy, Eightfold Path, Noah Wright, um, Extinguish, Tsunami, Gulch, Out of Pocket, Doomsday. Um, abrasion dare you know all of our friends bands that are from up here and uh, you know everyone else from california hardcore scene that uh you know we're happy to be a part of as well you know bands from southern california i fucking love vamakara momentum shout out twist Kane. i saw them two days ago i think it was here in san jose and i saw them again in oakland like a couple weeks ago and they're um one of my favorite current bands right now too they're fucking sick but uh yeah other than that thanks for your time man appreciate it all right. Well, thank you again, Justin, for coming on the podcast. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in and goodbye.